He is the son of Greg and Marla of the Mount Pleasant area. Pete is a member of the football and baseball teams. Pete is active in FCCLA, FFA, SAC, Athletic Leadership Council, President of the National Honor Society, and a broadcaster for RTC TV. Pete is also a 10-year 4-H member and attends the Idaville First Church of God. Pete will attend Rose Holman and study aeronautical engineering. Pete Duvall. Levi Martin. Levi is the son of Christopher, Christopher and Christine Poe and Jimmy and Emily Martin of the Fulton area. Levi is on the football team and also active in FFA and the 4-H Horse and Pony Club. After graduation, Levi will join the workforce and continue working at McKay Dairy. Levi Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we are ready to get underway here this evening with Gage Manier and Hunter Clemens taken out to the mat for this 120 pound weight class. Right, and our match is underway. Out to the center, locked up. Manier looking to get some hand control there as they go head to head. Clemens with a good head snap there, circling around. Clemens with a bit of an advantageous head position there. Still very early in the match as they wrap up. Manier getting a little low, trying for that shot. Disengages as he adjusts his headset, or excuse me, headgear. I'm wearing the headset. Manier going for that ankle control, head pressure. As he sprawls out, Clemens working for that single leg still. Clemens behind. Takes him down to the mat, and he'll get two points for that takedown. Manier, two points for a reversal as he comes behind. Gets that ankle control, working to break, break Clemens down to the mat. Clemens posting out, trying to build his base here. Manier getting head control as he's taking control of both of Clemens' arms. Clemens able to get one hand out. Manier two on one with that right hand. Comes around to the front, gets that headlock in, and Clemens gets around behind. He'll get two points for that reversal. Manier now in trouble, 
as Clemens has gone one on one, working on getting that half Nelson in. And that will end the first period. Maneer there, saved by the bell at the end of two minutes. Clemens up four to two. Clemens will start in referee's position. <coughs> Maneer working to get that ankle control. Doesn't quite get that tight waist in. Sweeps a leg, gets it back down to the ground. They go out of bounds, they'll reset in center. And again, Meniers goes for that ankle control, goes near ankle. Actually going for both. Gets Clemens bellied out. Clemens trying to build his base. And you're trying to keep that ankle control as he. Not sure exactly what he's doing there. He's focusing a lot on that ankle. Clemens has gotten back to his feet. Manier wrapping up a leg, going two on one with that left arm, rewrapping the leg. Clemens now on top. Clemens sprawling out really good. Going head pressure. And Manier ends up in a pinning location. He's working to get Clemens down on those shoulder blades. Clemens working to roll out of it. Maneer really settled. This could be it, and there's that pin. Maneer will strike first for the Comets now, putting six points on the board for the team score. Next up, we've got the 126 weight class with Caston's Ashton Boyer facing off against Knox's Cameron Duff. Duff lunges out quickly. Boyer returns, takes him down hard. He'll get two points for a takedown. Two points for that near fall. Boyer with great control here. Duff sits out, gets back to his feet. He'll get a point for that escape. And they lock back up in the center circle. Boyer working on some hand control here. Sprawls off of that shot. Duff will shove the whole works out of bounds. They'll reset in the center. Circle. Ashton works a quick head snap in there. Not quite able to follow up. Duff tries to return the favor. Pretty neutral in the center circle. No clear advantage. Duff pops the elbow. Doesn't do any kind of duck under or anything with it. Boyer trying for that shot. No good shot, so he backs out of it. Duff once again sprawling away from the shot. Boyer and Duff locked up. 30 seconds left here in the first period. Boyer goes for that double. Duff not quite able to sprawl out of it, but Boyer not able to get good control either. And he will get behind. I don't see any points for the takedown yet. And referee calls a stalemate there. They will reset with 8.8 .8 seconds left on the clock in the first period. Crowd wasn't happy with that stalemate call. 
And that will wrap up the first period of this match. Boyer with a fairly commanding four to one lead over Duff. Competitors will start the second period in neutral. Boyer going for that shot. No good shot there. These guys working for hand control. Boyer hits the knee, no shot. <laughs> and Boyer gets that double. Gets the blast double, but goes out of bounds with it. No points. The problem, of course, uh, I don't know if you could quite see it as they went out of bounds. When you do a blast double like that and just follow through, it's very easy for your opponent to use your own momentum and roll you over. Uh, Boyer may have been lucky that they went out of bounds with that. Duff trying to maintain head control there. Boyer goes in, there's the double and there's a good tilt down to the mat. Now has Duff on the mat, gets his head free. And there's the pin. Ashton Boyer putting another six points on the scoreboard. Comets now with a 12-0 lead over the Redskins. Next up at 132, we'll have Eli Zabel facing off against Nathan Sawyer. Zabel, a newcomer to Caston this year. <clears throat> and Zabel and Sawyer tie up. Sawyer with the takedown, he'll get two points. Has Zabel on his back right at the edge of the ring. Zabel trying to roll away, but with that arm control, Sawyer with a quick pin there. Six points to the Redskins. Next up, the 138 pound weight class is Miles Sherrick facing off against Connor Winzak. Winzak, son of coach Ron Winzak. Good head snap there, puts Sherrick on his back. Sherrick was able to roll away, just giving the two point takedown to Winzak. I think some of what we're seeing here is just experience. Winzak is a senior facing off against the freshman Sherrick. Sherrick's uh, left arm bundled up Winzak's gonna let him up. He'll get that one point for the escape. Winzak racking up another two points for the takedown. Allowing Sherrick back up, giving up that single point. Winzak, another two points for the takedown. And the referee giving two back points on that. Winzak now out to a commanding 8-2 lead as he works. Looks like he's trying to sink a head lever in. <clears throat> Sherrick on the bottom fighting. That's a tough place to be in. You burn a lot of energy for very little uh, visible progress. Sherrick now has that arm. He could try for a roll, but oh, he's gonna actually not get it done and he's gonna find himself pinned. Winzak now tying up the score, 12 all.
Now have Landon Rigney facing off against Knox's Jaden Scott in the 144 weight class. Scott getting a two point takedown. Rigney fighting, finding himself in a pin position. And he's able to roll him. Good roll there. Scott able to get out of that, but found himself in a bad position as he got himself entirely too high. Rigney nearly sat. Two point turnaround there. And another re roll. Several near falls here. Rigney finding himself parallel and then re rolled again. And that'll be a pin for Landon Rigney. Quite the fight of rolls in that match. But the 144 weight class will go to cast in there by pinfall. Should put the uh, score to 18-12. I believe we've got a bit of a glitch on the scoring at the, at the booth. Next up, we'll have the 150 pound weight class coming in with Caston's Gabe Burkett Raider facing off against Knox's Briar Ballas. And after the official visits the table, the score is 17-12. There must have been a match that went to tech fall as opposed to pinfall, which would give a five point team score versus the six points for pinfall. Burger Raider quickly into the lockup, reaches for that single leg. Decent sprawl there by Ballas. Ballas with the quick head snap, gets the headlock. So he's working a cow catcher here as he's got a wing in on the left side. And that's gonna roll Burkett Raider. Gabe's in a bad spot there, and he does fall to pinfall. <coughs> Next up, we've got one of our seniors, Levi Martin, in the 157 pound weight division, facing off against Knox's Cody Keene. Although I did just hear Knox saying, where's Cody? Should be an interesting matchup. Uh, Martin is always a high energy wrestler. Oh well. And with that, that's gonna be six points to Caston by forfeit. Keen not entering into the match. Up next, another of Caston seniors, Liam Wilburn in the 165 pound weight division. He will be wrestling against uh, Knox's Tucker Givens, another senior. Quickly behind Givens, takes him down with something of a mat return, but Givens gets a headlock. And the official is going to stop that match. And uh, gives, gives Wilburn a point for Givens putting in an illegal headlock. 
They tie back up in the center circle. Head snap there by Wilburn. Gets behind him and ends up in a headlock again. Wilburn on his side. He's getting a leg hook in, trying to prevent himself from being rolled. And climbs his way on top and ends up back underneath as he swims his way over and starts gaining control. He does get two points for the takedown from that. Reversal there by Givens. Not gotten in control enough that the referee has given him the two points. Wilburn on his back in a bad spot. All right, and a load of points being given out there. Two point near fall to Wilburn. Two point reversal to Givens. And then a three point near fall to Givens. That does bring the match score to five all. Some conversation about the score. Referee position, not quite able to escape that as Givens goes for a tight waist control. He's trying to roll Wilburn. Wilburn is shrimped up, fighting it. Wilburn able to stave off the chicken wing and finds himself in a pinning position. And Wilburn will win by pinfall with just 17.3 seconds left in the first period. Brings our score here tonight up through the 165 weight division to 23-18 Comets. As we bring out the 175 pound weight class, Kane Finke Facing off against, well, you know, I don't know. Oh, yeah, dude, that is Noah Bolin. It's the only 175 on the roster. He does get the takedown. Finky on the mat, bellied out. Bolin going one-on-ones. Trying to get arm control here. Now, Finky has just come back off an injury. So he's not quite had the same quality practice time. He does get rolled. Strong bridge, but not able to get those shoulder blades off the mat. The 175 will go to Noah Bolin of Knox. And that puts our score at Comets 29, Redskins 24. As we head into the 190 pound weight division, Caston senior Pete Duvall, who uh, in a basketball game would be on the other headset with me, facing off against Caden Reisner. Reisner going for the head snap. Duvall with the head snap, not quite able to re-engage fast enough. Reisner with a diving sprawl, looking for head control here. Is 
This guy's definitely locking up, looking a bit more like a heavyweight bout. <coughs> Duvall with a shot. And we had a penalty point given to the Comets as Reisner grabs the headgear on that shot. Duvall looking for an opening on that shot. Wrapped up again in the center circle. Duvall looking to create an opportunity to get his opponent's legs out from under him. Under a minute left here in the first, uh, first period, excuse me. And Duvall's shot goes out of bounds. They'll reset it neutral in the center. Referee gives a caution to Reisner. Locked up, Duvall, head control, trying to get some wrist control here. Reisner working to go low. Duvall fakes a shot. And Reisner has is, uh, is bleeding, so we've got a match stoppage here as we get him patched up, get blood cleaned off the mat, it looks like. Well, we're going to take this opportunity to step away and thank a sponsor. Appreciate you guys joining us here this evening. You're watching Cast and Comets Wrestling here on RTC TV. Food. And they've been able to get Reisner patched back up. And back underway, Reisner quick out of his stance. Looking probably for a little bit of retribution from that injury. And Duvall now losing his headgear. Seven point three seconds left in this first period. No way, <laughs> Duvall down to the mat looking for a shot. And that'll in the first period. Duvall up one nothing over Reisner. Reisner down into referee's position. And Duvall looking for that tight waist ankle. Reisner works to sit out, doesn't get sat out fast enough. Duvall trying to put a head lever in. Reisner trying to get a headlock out of it. Duvall not able to get Reisner rolled, but does it manage to keep him bellied out. There's the turn. And Duvall gets the pin just 27 seconds into the second period, putting another six points on the board for the Comets. That does make all three Comets seniors six point scorers for this evening. Next up in the 215 weight class, Cassin's Brody Brewer facing off against Gage Craig. Couple of freshmen out here.
Craig awful upright as he reapproaches the center circle. Craig with a head snap there, doesn't engage. Gage Craig didn't just get away with a, a headgear grab. It was on the opposite side from the official. And here Coach Wilburn down there saying, look for your shot. Brewer getting a hold of those legs. Craig sprawls out. Comes around to the side. Gets Brewer bellied out on the mat. No points assigned yet. He hasn't come around behind, and there he comes around behind. He gets control, gets those two points for a takedown. We're under a minute left in this first period. Craig goes near ankle control. Switching now to far ankle. Brewer looking for his opportunity to build a base. Tries to sit out, ends up turned back into the ring and bellied out. Down to 30 seconds. Brewer trying to build his base. Craig with that ankle control though, making it difficult. 20 seconds now. Brewer with the sit out and takes the whole mess out of bounds. They will reset in the center circle with 15.7 seconds left in the first period. <coughs> Brewer down in referee's position. <coughs> And Brewer with the sit out, doesn't quite get away, but he does get turned around, hooks a leg. Has to give that up though, as Gage has ankle control. Brewer stands up, gets the escape. One point there for that escape as the first period winds to a close. Coach Evans defers. And Coach Winzak calls for a neutral start to the second period. These athletes lock up again. Brewer with the shot. Craig with that sprawl. Craig trying, lots of head pressure there, bouncing Brewer up and down. Brewer knows he's in trouble as he goes to the mat. He's on his back. I think Craig probably had a pin there that didn't get called. Craig does get two points for the takedown. Gives him a four to one lead in the match. Breaks Brewer down to the mat. It looks like he's, looks like he's kind of trying for a cradle. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, now he's, as Brewer turtles, Craig is trying to get that cradle locked in. Brewer gets a hold of a leg. Craig sprawls out of it. Brewer now with both legs does put his head in disadvantageous position there. Brewer working back to his knees, trying to build his base. 42 seconds left in the period. And we've got half Nelson being put in there. As Craig sinks that half, Brewer is in trouble. Redskins fans excited about that, and that will be a pin for Gage Craig. <clears throat> and now in the heavyweight division, Knox's Isaiah Jones, a senior, facing off against, <clears throat> me, facing off against Caston's Luke Hipsher. Now the freshman Hipsher is an interesting story here uh, because he's wrestling in the 285 weight class while weighing in at only 195. And sometimes a little less than that. It is a real David and Goliath situation here. Brewer 
never afraid to engage there. Goes for that leg and just gets himself in trouble. Two points going to Jones. Jones trying to sink that half. And gets, gets Hipshire rolled and pinned really quickly. And that will bring Redskins up by one as we loop back around to the lightweight divisions. And that may in fact clinch the victory as Harley Ritchie will take a forfeit at the 106 pound weight division, giving another six points to Knox, which will put Kasten in a situation where, okay, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a forfeit here at the 113, but that's still gonna put Kasten down by one as we wrap up our regulation matches. Now we do have some exhibition matches scheduled as Kasten ladies are gonna come out and wrestle. And this should be Kasten's Livian Wilburn facing off against Knox's Sienna, Sienna Martinez. And this may be wrestled as the official 113. I'm, I'm not sure. I believe that this was supposed to be an exhibition or JV matchup. We'll have to see if they put points on the board for it. Wilburn here with good wrist control. Martinez trying to get a leg and Wilburn ends up in control. Two points there as she gets around, gets good control, works on taking Martinez down to the mat. Martinez trying to post out, gets back to her feet and Wilburn with that mat return. Wilburn running that power half there, gets Martinez on her back. Wilburn working to sink the half and settle her weight here. Got a three point near fall here as Martinez is on her back again. Wilburn gets her turn and gets the pin. Olivia and Wilburn taking a pinfall in the one either the 115 girls division or the 113 varsity division uh, in just over a minute. Next up we have uh, Maddie Sproul facing off. Well, I don't have their 125's name. Again, the, the, ladies, the ladies matchups were just added today. Redskins fast in there and Sproul on her back fighting to get tur turned over and falls to pinfall. Quite the aggressive start there by Knox. Sproul not quite ready for that. And next up we will have Emmy Zabel facing off against a Knox opponent. Again, I don't have a name here for the young lady from Knox. Starts, we're coming back early. Zabel ended up taken down by a headlock. Two points to Knox there. Zabel able to belly out. She, her opponent does still have a half sunk in. And will go out of bounds, resetting in the center. Zabel will be down in referee's position. Zabel goes for a straight stand up. Not able to get to it, but does get her base built. Knox with a hard mat return. Running that half, looking for a bit of a side cradle there. Zabel on her back. Able to get back to her belly as Knox goes to reestablish that cradle. Zabel, Zabel trying to get turned. Knox competitor hears her coach saying walk to her head. Zabel is now in trouble. Knox able to settle her weight and take that pin.
And that should wrap up our match here this evening. All right, the coaches are meeting in the center circle. Teams look to be lining up to shake hands. So that will conclude our senior night and home season opener. Well. I spoke too soon. We've got another exhibition match here. Get the senior Levi Martin some wrestling time. I don't know who he's faced off against out here. But he gets that blast double in. His opponent bellies out. Martin working to get that half as his opponent pulls his hand off his head. Martin with the one-on-ones gets his opponent's head down. Good scramble here by the Knox competitor trying to, trying to fight off Martin. Martin, of course, been wrestling for years. Gets that chicken wing in and works on torquing his opponent over by the arm. And this is gonna be very close and there's the pinfall. A lot of pressure there on that shoulder. And Kasten's Jabez Yarber will be out here to wrestle an exhibition match. with the single leg, goes out of bounds. Competitors locked up in the center circle. Yarber goes for that double, works on running the half. Circles up around the top. Parallel with his opponent, but he is settling his weight. He's on his toes. He's looking for his opponent to drop those shoulder blades. They are going down, and there's the pin. And that, that will wrap up our meet here tonight. Once again, Knox Redskins able to pull out a 42-41 victory over the Comets Grapplers here tonight. Looking ahead at the schedule, we'll be back, to, or uh, not tonight, it's awful late for that. We will be back on uh, Thursday night, uh, bringing you Cast and Varsity Girls Basketball hosting North Judson. Then we'll be coming back twice on Saturday. Saturday morning we have the Cast and Super Six, be several hours of wrestling and many exciting matchups Saturday morning. Saturday evening, the cast and guys are hosting Winnemac High School. So do come back for those matchups. Until then though, I'm Blair Zimmerman and this is RTC TV4.